Hello, Susanna here. I'm in, I'm near the Catalan Parliament. Here you go. And I don't know if you can see or you can hear all the, all the parakeets um, doing their song. And then there's somebody over there doing, I think he's playing saxophone. And then, uh, anyway, just been to see the Picasso Museum. So what's that got to do with property? Well, apart from the fact that the guy was a complete genius and uh, some of us are just, you know, steady eddies tr uh, doing our thing. What, was, what I found really interesting was that he ha um, was, was quite an, well, an incredibly accomplished artist by the time he was 14. And so we went to the Picasso Museum in Barcelona. It only holds us a little bit of his whole overall work. And there were 4,700 paintings in there. 4,700 paintings. Uh, and he was doing beautiful work by the time he was 14. But clearly he didn't stop um, trying things out, testing things, doing new things. And it just reminded me of, of a, a few of the books I've read recently and some of the research that I've read about how people become successful. Uh, so um, I always forget what his name is, Anders Ericsson, Eric Andersons, Anders Andersson or Eric Ericsson. Anyway, there's this fantastic um, academic who studied peak performance for 20 years called one of those two permutations is terrible. I'll put, I'll put the name in the thing below. Brilliant book. And I actually saw him speak at Hay and Wife Festival as well. And he studied peak performance of musicians, of business people, of athletes. And, and his studies very much show that 10,000 hours before you get to be really accomplished at something, which clearly Picasso did by the time he was about 14. And then Malcolm Gladwell uh, took that on in one of his books. Uh, 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 and he took that, that basic academic premise that you, to, in order to be expert at something, you need to have done 10,000 hours. Well, what has that got to do with you? Well, I think it's the assumption, uh, the, the assumption that you're going to go straight to property and get it right. Because you're not. Um, you, you need time to practice. So you've got two routes to, to, to do practice, really, haven't you? One is to plan first, which is kind of practice on paper rather than just jumping over the, over the cliff and not figuring out what you're going to do. So one of the things that when people say, what's the first thing I should do when I want to get into property? I'm like, write a business plan. Even if half of it is missing and you don't know what anything cost is, expenses, team, you know, all that stuff. By writing a business plan, you're kind of practicing in theory, not practicing with huge amounts of money. You're figuring out the bits you're missing. So if you've got the patience to write a business plan and figure out what's missing, that's fantastic practice. And then once you do jump in, just accept you're gonna get some stuff wrong. Other people are definitely gonna get some stuff wrong. It is all part of putting in the hours and becoming expert. Because you move, don't you, from unconsciously incompetent to um, consciously incompetent, which is the hugely embarrassing stage where you're like, oh man, I don't know anything to consciously competent where you really have to think about things to then unconsciously competent and that is just through those 10,000 hours so just keep going and don't expect perfection first time around just try and minimize your risks using some of the guidelines I've given you in other videos see you soon bye